Well, hello there. I can see that bars are moving, so you should still be able to hear me or those of you that have joined me. So uh, thank you very much for, for wherever you are in the world. We've got uh, people from all over the place I can see here. So already the chat room has been busy, which is nice to see. But uh, thank you so much for joining me tonight. We are definitely in for a treat. Those of you who, like I said, during the countdown, know anything about Kevin, you'll know that he doesn't muck about. This guy tells it as it is. And that's what I think we need to hear. We need to hear it as it is. No fluff. Just you're going to get some proper sort of real world insights, I would suggest tonight. So I'm really looking forward to that. We've had a good chat during the week as well. So looking forward to sharing what we've kind of kind of written down on my little sheet here, the kind of things that we're going to cover. But before we get into it, I've got my uh, my little bit of admin to do, as I always do. So just a few things to mention. I don't want to go too long before we bring Kevin in. But the first one, those of you tuned in last week, you'll remember I mentioned about Again, it's conference season coming up. We've got the Lightroom, Kelby One Lightroom Conference. That's coming up in uh, middle of April. And if you want to take a look at more details about that and have a look at their early bird pricing, there's a bitly link I've got for you. So it's just LR Conf 2024. And the other thing to let you know about was this thing here, which is something I haven't done for, oh, I don't know how long now, in-person kind of a workshop. It's not organized by myself. It's organized by the Raw Photographic Society. And it says it's all to do with iPhone, drone, and AI. But basically, it's going to be a whole day of retouching. We're going to be going through all kinds of editing. So I'll be talking about editing landscapes, portraits. There will be some mobile phone stuff in there as well. So if you want to check that out, I think it costs a horrendous £12.50 for non-members to be there in person. And the actual link to check out more details for it is just there. So again, another bit.ly link, rps-editing is that one. And the last thing to let you know about, I do believe, I think he's here. I think he's in the room. I think he's in the chat room. But today is Lee Churchill's birthday. So just want to say happy birthday to Lee because Lee is a regular, regular viewer. So if he is here this evening, fair play. If he's not, I think we'll forgive him seeing as it's his birthday. But right, let's waste no more time. Let's get Kevin in. But before I do, Kevin sent over some images for me to create a slideshow. I'll play that for you now so you get an idea of the kind of stuff that he's uh, he's done over the years. And then we'll get him in and we'll start digging deep and finding out more about the life of being Kevin Mullins as a photographer. So here's Kevin's promo. So there you go. Some absolutely stunning images there. And you know, there's, there's some of the things that really stood out when Kevin first sent those images over to me and I'm going through them, putting together this slideshow. It was, I've seen lots of wedding photography over the years, but there's just something about Kevin's stuff. And I'm not just saying this because we're going to be talking to him in a minute, but there's just something about it. It's There's, there's candid photography. 
But then there's Kevin's. Do you know what I mean? He just seems to have this real knack of capturing the moment and you almost feel like you're there. So wonderful stuff. And like Tim has commented here saying, wonderful images, fantastic. And my friend Anthony saying quality work. Couldn't agree more. So let's just bring the main man in and say, hello, Kevin, can you hear me? I can hear you, Glenn. Thank you very much. And hello. Wonderful, wonderful. And we're, we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants tonight because usually when I get a guest come in, they've got headphones in and stuff like that. But we kind of realised the other day when we were chatting that actually there is no echo or didn't seem to be anyway. So hopefully it continues as it is, Kevin. But uh, yeah, rather than wearing those big heavy things, yeah, just yeah, be yeah. yourself. There you I've go. got a cat ready just in case. <laughs> well, for those of you uh, who are watching, obviously I'll be posting up all of Kevin's links in the uh, description part of the video once this actual uh, live has finished, and there'll be a live, uh, there'll be a blog post as well tomorrow. But you can see there we've got the actual Kevin's details. But Kevin, just to get us up and running, because I've got, like I said, I've got, I've got so many things that I want to ask you about, and I'll, I don't, I'll hopefully we'll get through them, but I think I'm sure we'll be adding to them as we go through this anyway. But before we do dive into it, just to get us both warmed up. Give us an idea, because I don't even think I know this myself. Give us an idea of how did you even become the person, you know, the photographer that you are now? How did that all start for you? Well, uh, I'll, I'll keep it brief, but um, essentially back in 2006 or seven, maybe, I don't know, I was still working on IT, like a lot of photographers, you know, you, you kind of, we start in IT, don't we, a lot of us. And uh, it was just too much. I was, we'd moved to the Cotswolds where we live now and I was traveling back and forth London, two and a half hours each way every day and just decided to, to change. I needed to do something different. And at that point, uh, believe it or not, didn't own a camera, had no idea about photography at all. And uh, I was on a train one day and I picked up a magazine and I was flicking through it and there was like an article about weddings and, you know, I was already married. I didn't particularly want to get married again. Um, very happy <laughs> with my wife. And I was just about to flip the page, but there was these beautiful black and white candid wedding pictures that I saw in the bottom part of this page. And that really piqued my, my attention, you know, and I, I kind of went home to my wife and I said, I'm going to, I want to do this. And she was like, what are you on about? You, you know, you don't, you haven't got a camera, you, you, you don't smile, you don't, you know, you, you're just not going to be very good at it. Um, and, and, you know, maybe, maybe I wasn't very good at it, but we're now 16 years later, nearly 800 weddings or so, I think. Um, wow. and that was it. Yeah. That, that was basically it. And I often joke, it was a good job. I didn't pick up a magazine and turn to a page about, I don't know, pedometry or, you know, kind of and being a nail clinic, a nail technician or something. But <laughs> no, I think you it. made the right choice. I mean, made the right yeah. choice. But did you only say you didn't have a camera or anything like that? So was there ever before that moment then when you've seen this stuff in the magazine that somehow has just kind of sparked something off in your mind? Was there any history at all with photography in your life? You know, did you, had you ever really done anything? No, nothing. Literally, wow. absolutely nothing. Um, the only, you know, often you see on websites, you know, my story of photography began when my dad handed me a, you know, yeah, whatever, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And no, nothing. The only memories I have from my childhood is my parents or my mum buying a, a, you know, like a, if we go to Barry Island or something, she'd buy one of those takeaway kind of instant cameras. And yes. she would, all, all I ever remember is she would just say, you know, she had to stand with her back to the sun and I had to stand, you know, facing the sun. And, and that was it. That, that was literally it. Um, so yeah, nothing, nothing whatsoever. Um, but I've always, I always, even up until that point, I always admired, um, you know, really good, honest black and white, especially black and white documentary photography. I didn't know it. I didn't know why. Um, but they were the images that I would draw, you know, if I was reading the, um, Sunday times magazine or something like that, you know, it was, it would always be the main story and I'd be, you know, I'd be engrossed by these images not with any thought about why or how, or I'd love to do that, literally nothing, um, until I read that magazine that day. And that, that was it. Yeah. So that's obviously sparked that interest. And you're thinking, I really want to do this, but then there's no, you know, you're not a photographer beforehand saying, oh, I think I'll now go into weddings. This is literally photography and saying you want to go into weddings. So where did the skill of the photography come into it then? Did you kind of, did you go on courses? Was it very much just trial and error? You getting out and taking as much, many pictures as you can and just learning or what? Yeah, I mean, I bought a, uh, I, I can't even remember what they call it now, a Canon, I think 
rebel something or other. I think I think we've all had them at some point. Yeah, <laughs> rebels. Like that. yeah I can't remember what it was called, but um, and I, I, vi- I vividly remember this moment. We were in a, a place we lived before and sitting at the, the living room table and I was reading about depth of field. And uh, it was that moment when I realized that if you change aperture, you know, you get this blurriness in the background. And, uh, and I was like, wow, that's magic. That's amazing. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, that was it. I, I, I kind of, I, I did go on some workshops. I, in fact, I went and, and in fact, I actually going back to that, that article, the pictures that I saw were from a wonderful, um, documentary wedding photographer called Jeff Ascoff. So it was his right. pictures. He no longer shoots weddings, but it was his pictures that I saw. I didn't know anything about him or anything at that point. Um, and I, I kind of, at that time, the internet wasn't really, it was certainly not what it is now, but it wasn't really, you know, there was no, I, I don't like even sure whether Facebook, I certainly didn't have a Facebook account. Um, but you know, I found a, an internet forum and I just blundered in and said, Hey, I have no idea about photography, but I'd like to come along to a wedding with somebody one day. Um, and there's a, a kind chap called Steve Corson up in Birmingham said, that's fine. Come along. I do really formal wedding photography and you can do all the other boring stuff. And, and uh, which is the boring stuff is what I wanted to do. Of course, the candid. Uh, so I went, I did a couple of weddings with him, stuck my website together, put portfolio together and, and that was it. And I was very honest with the first clients. I, you know, I'd never done this before, obviously charging right. very little indeed. Um, but I was very lucky in the fact that my career up to that point had been in uh, the very embryonic stages of online marketing, SEO, et cetera. So my website literally flew, um, you know, and I put my website live and within two hours I had an inquiry, uh, which, you know, oh, wow. nearly threw the bottom of my pants off because I was like, oh, <laughs> hang on, I know about this. Uh, and that was it, you know, and, 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 and there we went, you know, and, and that was... That was August 2000. I, I shot my first wedding August 2008, like August 2008. Um, and I think that first year I did something like 15 weddings. And the second year I did 70 weddings, seven zero, which was my insane. God. Big, wow. big number. So yeah. that you say that was 2000 and what? Sorry, 2016. Two, that you, 2008. 2008. Yeah. So from the moment then you start, you saw those images on the, in that magazine, how soon was it from that point that you then photographed? Can you remember how long it was until you photographed your first wedding then? Uh, not exactly, but I would, it was certainly less than a year. I would say probably nine months. <gasps> wow. Yeah. yeah. Now, do you know, this is, this, this is interesting because I, I didn't know that about you. I thought you'd had like a history in the, in the photography doing other things and then kind of moved into the wedding stuff. Because one of the things that I've got on my list here to kind of mention to you was a, was about because I, I anybody who knows me knows that I when it comes to weddings I, if I had a hat on I'd take it off to you mate because of utmost respect because I tried a few years ago and quickly realised it just wasn't for me it's just it's just not my thing mm. very very hard work having to perform at a high level for a long time is in just incredibly hard work especially when you've got people who can be, be a little bit challenging sometimes at certain weddings. But I remember going back, I had, there was a guy I remember sort of, I can't remember his name now, but I remember sort of dealing with him at the time. He was also wanting to get into photography. He'd literally just got himself a camera. And he said, I think I'll do some weddings so I can get some money in first. And it, it kind of, it kind of infuriated me. It made me angry. So I thought, how could you possibly treat weddings as something as a way to practice to get your money in to then get your kit to go on and do other things because I thought this is like one of if not the most important days of people's lives and you're kind of treating like that. but there you, but there you are you know you're you're it's a whole different ball game for you because you're doing it because I really want to do this yeah and, and actually even now believe it or not I think a lot of people in the photography world look down at wedding photography generally you know obviously not everybody but but it is seen as this kind of you know they're not really necessarily proper photographers these people um but it's interesting that certainly since over since covid and, and credit crunch and all that kind of stuff you do see a lot of people moving from uh certainly newspaper photography that kind of thing moving into wedding photography because brutal fact of it is it pays very very well and or it can pay very very well and it is really hard it is a challenging job 
Mm. Uh, now, of course, there's different levels of um, uh, kind of skill levels and, and capabilities and all of that, of course, you know, and, and there's a price point for everybody. But I have always felt that the reason why I got into it and the reason why I stayed with it after that kind of first year, at least, was because I really just enjoyed seeing the humanity of people, you know, the, mm. the, the, the kind of, I often say to people, it's just people being people. That's it. You know, they're just in this, this glass bubble of a wedding, but ultimately it's just people being people. Now I would ne- I would be an awful wedding photographer if I was a traditional wedding photographer, group shots, formals, you know, bridal portraits, all of that kind of stuff. I don't enjoy those at all in any way, shape or form. So I've always maintained and built my career around this idea of candid documentary reportage, whatever you want to call it. And, and that's, that's allowed me to have the longevity of it because, uh, you know, every single day is different. Every single wedding is different. Even if you're at the same venue, you know, the light is different. The people are different. The personalities that all the sound of the day is different, Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and that keeps it interesting. Um, and, you know, I really feel like uh, a, a good wedding photographer actually, you know, is earning their crust for sure, 100%. Mm. You know, it's, it is a very challenging thing to do. But I also say with a little glint in my eye, you know, as a documentary wedding photographer, it does gives you a little bit of latitude because you, you have the, you know, you have the kind of get out of card jail of, well, it's documentary, you know. Um, you know, you're not, you're not confined to taking pictures of the... The, the, the shoes on a windowsill or hanging the dress on a yeah, tree yeah, yeah, yeah. and all of that kind of stuff, you know. So, all right. so there is a lot of Actually, Kevin, on that point then, you've made me think of something here because I remember, again, going back to when I was, you know, fresh-faced and trying my hand at some things and I'm trying a few weddings. You know, you always get your the occasional friend that says, oh, we're getting married. Would you do our wedding for us? I'm thinking, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. And they actually, I remember them saying to me, this particular couple, that they owned, they didn't, that they gave me certain pictures that they wanted. And the majority of it, they wanted to be, I guess you you would call it kind of it reportage, can, yeah. that kind of stuff where you're just capturing people. Do you know I mean, long lenses, capturing events and things like that going on, moments. Uh, and that's what we were doing. And it was going really well during the day. And I was thinking, actually, this is all right, rather than having to conjole people and, you know, where's auntie this, where's uncle that, and get them all into one place, which I, I didn't enjoy doing. That's probably why I didn't like doing it anyway. But yeah. we were doing these particular photos, and then we'd kind of finish doing the photos. And I remember that the the groom's parents, the mother in particular, kicked off big time because yeah. she wants, she was actually come storming over to me. Why aren't you doing the group shots? Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? And I was like, whoa, 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 hold on a second. You know, this is what your son wanted. This is what he talks about. I don't agree with it. Really kicked off. Did you ever have that? Because obviously the candid stuff, this reportage, if that's the right word to use, I don't know if that's a word that you like or what, but yeah. that that is your thing. That is your USP, I guess, isn't it? Did Have you ever had it when people who are at the wedding don't kind of get it and think, why isn't he doing this? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and uh, it's quite a lot to touch on in this kind of sentence, if you like, at this moment. Um, first of all, documentary rep- reportage, candid, in my eyes, exactly the same thing. Uh, right. From a market, if people are out there who are documentary wedding photographers, candid is the word to target in your SEO because that's the thing that most people understand. Um, but yeah, absolutely. My very first wedding, um, I remember it so vividly. It was the day before my birthday and, uh, you know, I'd gone and I'd, I'd done what I thought was documentary wedding photography. Obviously, I didn't really understand it that much at the time, but I, I did, you know, I did a good job, reasonable job. Um, and then right at the very end, I said to the bride and groom, ah, oh, I'm off now, you know. And this was at a place, I don't know, somewhere in Essex, it was like a five hour drive home or something. And they said, oh, what about the group shots? And I was like, uh, OK, all right, well, we, we better do them then. And we did 49 of them. And they were awful. 49, 49 group shots. 49, yeah, because <laughs> I had no idea how to uh, control the people, control the ideas, control the, the thought process of this this idea. So I went home to my wife that night and I was like, this is not what I want to do. This is, the, you know, this was the first wedding. And, um, you know, I'm, my wife's been amazing all, all of this time. And she was like, well, you know, how do we, how do we make it so that that's not part of your day? Other people must be doing this. Um, and so then it just became a branding exercise. And, you know, I I was very, very blunt effectively with the branding of, you know, like, this is what you're going to get. Um, and, and by and large, it's worked. 
Now, there are a couple of tips that I have for, uh, you know, mums, mums of brides, for example, bless them, you know, they, they want to have the best day of their lives. And, uh, you know, I just send one email to my brides, you know, before the wedding. And I just say to them, look, just mention to your immediate bridal family, your parents about my style, just let them know that this is what I do, because they may not be aware of it, and they will expect something differently. The moment I started doing that about seven or eight years ago, you know, I never had any kind of issues again. Um, the one thing that does repeatedly happen is the guests, obviously, generally the guests um, who will kind of come up to you and say, oh, can I can I have a picture with with my girlfriend, you know, my boyfriend or my wife or whatever. Um, and of course, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not a uh, I'm not going to say, no, I'm a documentary photographer. You know, <laughs> I'll, just say, uh, I'll say, yeah, yeah, of course, you know, and I'll, I'll grab a camera, whichever camera it is. And I'll say, right, you know, stand there, do this, and I'll take the picture. And then, big tip, and then I'll look at my camera and I'll go, oh, look at that, battery's running. I've, I've just got to go to the car. I'll be back in a minute, and I'll disappear out of the room. So uh, all the other people that have seen me do that, <laughs> <laughs> who are about to say, oh, can we have one as well? They then retire to the bar and forget all about it. So there's a lot of little tips and tricks. Um, however, you know, by and large, certainly now over the last kind of, eight, nine years, uh, everybody gets it. Um, but in the beginning, yeah, it can, it can be a bit tricky and it's, it's all about client education. You know, that, that's, yeah. that's what it's all about. The clients almost exclusively get it and understand it. That's why they come to me, but you're right. It's parents, friends, family, that kind of thing. Yeah. It just, again, it just goes to show really that the photography, no matter what genre really obviously when it involves people is all about people's skills, isn't it? You know, even if it's the simple one-to-one -one portrait to the group portraits that you're talking about there with weddings, it is all primarily people's skills, really. Yeah, it is. And, you know, they, they, don't get me wrong. There's, there, I, I have some amazing friends who are, uh, who do beautiful editorial group shots, wedding photography. Um, you know, just because I don't particularly like them does not mean it's a bad thing. Of course it's not. Um, but, uh, you know, for me, it's about the people. It always has been, um, you know, when, whether I'm doing weddings or street photography or family photography, it's always candid. You know, it, it's it, that's what's driven me all this time. Um, mostly black and white also that's driven me. Uh, mm. But it's, you know, it's this, I don't know, you know, it's this kind of curiosity about, um, seeing how people interact with each other. And, you know, I often say to people also that it's, it, it's not about just taking pictures, you know, it's about using your ears and understanding what's going on, reading the room, listening to the characters, you know, I'll often stop shooting, um, put the camera down and listen, and, and maybe I'll hear the, I don't know, the, the chefs in the, in the kitchen, you know, maybe that will encourage me to go and say to the wedding planet, can I go in there and, and get a couple of shots of them plating up, you know, or I'll hear kids laughing in the garden or, you know, whatever it is. And, and, and that's mm. a, a massive thing. Um, I feel like a lot of wedding photographers, uh, specifically wedding photographers feel like when they're working, they have to be seen taking pictures because they've been paid to be the yeah. wedding photographer. Right. Um, and actually, they're taking a lot of pictures that they know they're never going to give to the clients, but they're taking them because they need to be seen taking pictures. And better for them would be to put the camera down and observe, look, mm. you know, watch, wait, understand, um, and see what's going on. And they will become better observers. You know, that's, that's something that I kind of, for me at least, many years ago, I, something clicked. And I was like, you know what, anybody can can do this. Anybody can understand this. That's not the difficult thing. It's what you see through that little window there. That is the important thing. And what we see through that little window there is very different for everybody. And that's a great thing. It would be a boring world if we were all the same. So, you know, your observation skills and your understanding of, um, uh, interactions and, and the play of people is, mm. is what will give you your style. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean your style will be the same as mine or other people, but it will give you a style that's unique to you because, you know, you may be in more interested in the, uh, the raucous side of things, or, you know, you may be more interested in the, uh, the emotional side of things, but ultimately what you see is what will be in the picture. And that means that you're an observer before a photographer in my mind. It's really, really interesting you say that. As you were talking then, saying about 
you know, photographers thinking because they're doing the wedding, they should be seen to be active. And I, I kind of get why that would be the case. But the value of what you say there about, look, just just come away from the camera for a minute and just observe that that really hits home because I've talked about this before many times about when I was when we all went through the COVID thing and I tried my hand at the landscape stuff. And I totally and I probably still do, but I totally sucked at it. Initially, I thought because I was going out with the intention of I have to get a picture. And I was kind of like with this determination with a camera in my hand looking for composition stuff. And it never really happened until yeah. the one time that I just literally went to the location I'd been to many times and just relaxed. I put the camera bag down. I didn't even get the camera out. I got a flask of coffee and I just enjoyed being there and looking around. And then yeah. I noticed things. And that there, that, that to me, is, is literally what you've just said. You know what I mean about enjoying where you are, absorbing yourself in the whole place. Absolutely. I mean, if you're there to, to on a commission, of course, then it's slightly different. You've got, to, you know, you you have to do some stuff. But you know, yeah. you know, for example, when I go out by myself to do street photography, I'll just find a street corner that I like, and I can spend the whole day there. You know, I'll, I'll you know, I'll sit down, I'll what, I'll have a coffee, I'll watch, I'll wait, I'll use my ears, I'll wait for the light to adjust. I'll, you know, I'll plan my things, and it's still candid, but it's an enjoyable, it's really cathartic, and. You know, I feel like a lot of us, especially in the street photography world, there's a lot of pressure to, um, you know, kind of run around London or run around wherever you are to get the pictures and get them onto Instagram really quickly and edit them mm. and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and and, they might, and I, there are some absolutely phenomenal street photos that, you, that hit his Instagram, of course. But, you know, I'm I'm all about relaxing. And, and if I'm mm. going out and it's not a commission, I'm not being paid, I'm, I'm under no pressure here, then first and foremost, it's a nice day out in London. That's the key yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, and I'll take my camera along for the ride. Um, but yeah, at a wedding and, you know, it, it is to a certain extent, you know, different, of course, but it's, you know, there's only uh, Western weddings, at least. There's only a, um, you know, certain things happen at certain times. You know, bride walks down the aisle, first kiss, they walk mm. up the aisle, uh, speeches, cut the cake, dance, boom. Everything else is, <laughs> you know, is fair game. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, you, in the world we live in there with mirrorless cameras and, uh, you know, 250 gig memory cards, etc. You can, you can do yourself a, you know, you can get a hernia by taking too many pictures and thinking about the editing the, in the culling of those pictures, you know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I often, I really, really encourage people to slow down, shoot less, observe more. And they will, believe it or not, will have more keepers on the day because they're concentrating on seeing rather than concentrating on yeah. just shoot, 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 and to a certain yeah, yeah, extent, yeah. hoping for the best. Kevin, leading on from that then, there was something when me and you were chatting earlier in the week to go through the kind of setup that we're doing for the, for this, there was something that you mentioned to me which really sort of piqued my interest, and it was where you said, let me get my little thing here, you said, when you're talking about poor, uh, pictures that you take generally, I think you said they don't have to be good they have to be important. Is yeah. that right? And what, yeah. what do you mean? What do you mean by that? So I mean, uh, and again, you know, and I'll quite happily say this to potential wedding clients, look, the pictures you might get from me may not be technically perfect. But I hope that they will be good, they will be important, they will be important, I should say. Um, and for me, you know, as, a, as somebody who's documented my own family growing up, uh, you know, it's far more important for a picture to be important than it is to be perfect. Um, yeah. And so by that, I mean, you know, I, I literally, well, so here's the thing. If the light is good, mostly when I'm outside, I'll have my camera set in fully automatic. I just trust the camera to do its thing. You know, the cameras, the people that make the cameras are far more intelligent than me. Um, <laughs> now, if I'm shooting in the studio or I'm filming or I'm, you know, doing commercial stuff, then that's different, of course. But you know, ultimately, I want to be able to see the scene, take the photo and let the camera do the thing. So that might mean that the ISO might be a little bit higher, it might be a little bit blurry, there might be a little bit of motion in it. Um, or, you know, more importantly, I think, you know, ultimately, the thing to think about with this is that the moment doesn't get um, uh, eradicated. So by that, I mean, you know, I would rather if there's a bride and groom hugging or the, the image that I think you just showed about with the dad hugging his, his daughter just after the ceremony, that's the one. You know what? I'm going to take one picture and hope I get it and move away. Because if I stand there 
and shoot, 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 different angles. Have I got it? Have I got it? Is he going to cry a little bit more? That moment disappears. It evaporates. You know, it just goes away. That guy will see me. You know, he might turn around and want a portrait with his daughter or, you know, mm. and, and, and that moment in time it goes. It's, you know, uh, it, it's like that. Uh, that scene in um, Back to the Future, you know, with the photographs where people just mm. evaporate because they did mm. something that didn't happen. Um, so for me, it's far more important to get that picture and then move out of the way to let that moment carry on. Um, and if that picture is not perfect in terms of sharpness or grain or whatever, you know, composition perhaps, so be it. I would rather have it like that than not have it and not have that moment, you know. Do you, actually, on that note then, Kevin, I mean, that's, it's, it makes total sense what you're saying there because I can think of several stories over the over the years that that would be relevant to. But when it comes to, you know, what you say there, the picture might not be, it might not be perfectly sharp. It might be slightly out of focus, blah, 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 blah. Do you think really when it comes to it that when you go and when you sort of, I don't know how you show the images to your clients when you're, when you're doing the weddings, but let's say if they have a sit down and they're looking through the images, do they ever... No, do they ever comment on that, or is it? Do you think it's just us as photographers that are a bit, for yeah. want of a better word, anal about it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do, do the clients really ever borrow, worry about that? I don't think so. I'd, certainly, I've never had any kind of feedback along that lines. You know, all the feedback I've had, especially about the super emotional pictures, are uh, oh mm. my god, I cried, blah blah blah, all that kind of stuff. You know, which is what you want, and that's ultimately that's job done for me. Um, so yeah, I don't think I really don't think clients are. I, you know, and I've shot a lot of um, other photographers' weddings and, you know, I've shot weddings of uh, film directors and all kinds of things like that, you know, over the years. And, you know, I think, again, thinking about the branding of my business, the pictures that I show on my website are not necessarily pinch perfect, you know, in terms of mm. pixel or anything like that. Um, and so that drives, that draws them to that. You know, there was a... Uh, a wonderful documentary on the BBC iPlayer this week, if people are, are listening, I'm not sure if you'll still be able to see it, about the photographer called Tish Murpha. And um, she she's no longer with us, but her daughter found her archive of work and it's 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 about industrial northeastern real life uh, British scenes. And, you know, of course, it's all shot on film. You know, there's parts of it that are overexposed. There's some of it that's got a motion blur, camera movement. But my words, you know, this is, they've made a BBC documentary about this. They're not going to make a yeah. BBC documentary about pin sharp wedding pictures. I can tell you that now, you know. And so, mm. you know, think about my, honestly, my advice to people is think about the moment. Don't allow your um, uh, anxiety about getting the perfect picture because you perhaps want to put it on Instagram or your website. Uh, you know, don't let that, that cannot be a mitigating factor when you're shooting candid documentary photography because mm. the moment is the most critical thing and it is quite sure. easy to disrupt the moment okay so so on that then you're talking about the way you kind of like fleetingly move around what's going on so that you do capture these kind of movements there when it comes to kit what kind of kit now obviously i know that you're a, a fuji guy that's what you primarily use but when it comes to the actual kit that you're taking to a wedding, what are you taking? Because I know from my my own experience when it comes to going out to try my hand at, say, seascape or landscape, when I've got too much choice, mm. I, I I don't get what I want to go for. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I've, I've, oh, should I try that lens? Or should I try that filter? But for you, what have you kind of, what have you brought it down to that gives you the, the best possible uh, results when you're out there doing weddings because you, you, we all see them you know web photographers who've got you know multiple cameras over the shoulders multiple lenses and stuff like that bag they're pulling stuff out what what is your kind of go-to kit so now i shoot with um two fujifilm uh, xt5s ultimately you know i think the most important thing is the lenses um and the focal length so fujifilm is aps-c so i use an 18 mil and a 56 mil which is approximately 2485 in the full frame world uh and that's it and actually you know i don't i i can't remember since that 18 mil lens was launched a couple of years ago shooting pretty much anything other than those two you know and i will shoot with two cameras um through the day I don't even carry a bag. My All my stuff is stored in the car. I, of course, I have backup equipment, backup lenses, all of that kind of stuff. But I go to the wedding with those things in my pocket, in my jacket pocket, 
actually, usually this jacket, is an X100 or an X70, uh, which are little kind of Fujifilm compact cameras. Um, and that's it. You know, that that is it. That's all I need. Um, and it's very liberating because I was that guy also back in the early days. Right at the beginning, I shot with Canon equipment, which was great. There was absolutely nothing wrong with it. It was a bit big and heavy. Um, and I bought everything. You know, I had a 70 to 200. I had a 2470. I had 85. I had, and I would take this, you know, it was like going on holiday for six months. I was taking all these <laughs> lenses and all this stuff with me. Um, and 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 then, you know, without kind of banging the Fujifilm drum too much, when the original X100 came out, I realized that I didn't need any of that stuff. I just didn't from, from my personal style. Now, of course, it's, mm. I'm talking about myself. Everybody else is very different or can be very different. So, so that was it. And then once the um, Fujifilm stuff came along, I migrated to 23 mil and, eight, and 56 mil, the 23 mil lens, 56 mil lens, which emulated the 3585 I had been using with um, Canon. I kept 2385, uh, 2356 for, I don't know, seven or eight years. And then the new 18 mil feature film lens came out about two years ago, I think it was. And that was it, 23 mil. That was re uh, retired as a backup lens and everything is 18 mil and 56. That's it. Cool. So you reckon then over the years and since you started, which was saying now is 16 years since you kind of first did your first wedding, you're talking 800 weddings. Is that what you said? 800? I think, yeah, it's some, uh, not quite 800, maybe mid 700, it's a lot. I think. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of weddings. Lot, so, yeah. and obviously one thing we talked about in the week, which really surprised me was how, because I've kind of, not, I know you as a wedding photographer, but I also know that you do other stuff, but you said that you are, and I want to talk about this in a bit more detail in a short while, but you said you are moving away from doing weddings. You're kind of going a slightly different direction because you want to, well, you just feel it's time, I guess. So before we kind of go into that and where where you are now looking to go with what you're doing, I I want to kind of draw a lot, almost draw a line on the wedding side of things by you giving us, I don't know, three, if, if, you, if there was somebody who's going to start doing wedding photography now, what are you, what would be Kevin's three top tips for? I guess we've probably covered one of them already, which is like the slow down observe. But you've got to think yeah. of three more. Three top tips. Three top tips for a wedding photographer. Well, I think you know, don't be don't be afraid to follow your own voice. Uh, you know, we don't all have to do what everybody else does, and so you know, if you if you're fearful of being a candid photographer because you think everybody else does group shots and I'm worried that I won't get any bookings. That's just not true because not everybody else does the group shots, etc. you know, and that doesn't mean by the way that you can't be a really good documentary photographer and also do group shots. Absolutely. I don't believe that that's, that's the thing. Um, so yeah, you know, trust yourself, trust your style, only shoot what you want to shoot essentially. Um, because otherwise you'll fall out of love with it pretty quick. And if the day is a challenge, if you come back from a wedding, you know, obviously every now and again, we all come back and we think, oh, uh, that was a bit hard. But if, if that's happening regularly and you're not enjoying it, then something is, is, has gone wrong. And usually I would imagine it's down to the fact that you're not, uh, you're not shooting the stuff that you really enjoy. Um, mm. and then uh, coming on to that, really, I did have, uh, you know, observation rather than technique as, as my number two, but I'll, I'll move that out of the way uh, quickly and. <laughs> And, uh, you know, linking to the first point really is, is about, um, you know, your brand and, uh, you know, your often people don't really understand the difference between branding, marketing and advertising and your brand is your almost like your personality, what people think about you, you know, so that has to be all encompassing pretty much everything you do on social media, you know, the way you answer the phone, all of that kind of stuff. It's super important. Um, so don't, you know, don't, the amount of people, and I, I, honestly, this, this is a regular, regular occurrence. You know, I want to be a documentary wedding photographer like you. Um, I feel like I've got the right pictures, etc. And then I go to the website and the very first picture is, uh, you know, a dress hanging from a tree or a bridal portrait or something. And they might be beautiful pictures, but, you know, really, really support your brand and use your own style. Those two things go, go hand in hand. Um, and the third one, <laughs> the third one <laughs> is... To remember that we are just wedding photographers. We're not rock stars, you know, and it, 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 there are people who 
do brain surgery and save the world and firefighters and all that kind of stuff. You know, social media is a place that I think has become poisoned by vanity. Um, and there are a yeah. lot of, there are a lot of wedding photographers out there who think that the wet, they are more important than the wedding and getting a reel or getting this or getting, you know, a selfie with them in the bride, whatever, all those things. Um, they're not more important. The most important thing is the fact that these two people have fallen in love and they're, this is the, you're, you're, you're privileged enough to photograph the embryonic stages of the rest of their life. It's not about you. We are not rock stars. None of us are rock so, stars. So are you saying then that in you, you obviously being in that industry, that some wedding photographers, some wedding photographers these days, when they're going to photograph, you know, this very, very important day for these two people, they are going there also with the conscious effort of, I need to get content for my social media. Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. And of course it is a minority, but, but that, the, those types of people are the ones that often float to the top in terms of the algorithms on social media, et cetera. Yeah. But I've seen it so many times and more and more since the pandemic, more and more, um, you know, it's, it, it's smoke and mirrors to a certain extent, you know, and, and, and it's, it, I would be concerned if I was, uh, you know, a bride or a groom and, you know, a photographer rocks up and they're doing reels and social media and all this and all that kind of stuff. Of course, you know, you ultimately want to take great pictures and have enough portfolio style pictures for your website, for your forward marketing. Of course you do. Um, but don't go to a wedding thinking this is a great venue. So today I'm going to make sure I get award winning pictures. You know, and that's the most important thing today is I use this light, I use this venue, I get the bride and groom to do this, because I'm going to win awards, or I'm going to put this on Instagram, etc. Great, if those things happen naturally and organically, brilliant. Mm. But you know, we're wedding photographers, that's it. We're not, we're not, you know, it's as much as it's an important job try and keep grounded you know yeah. that that's a very important thing i think so so has that got anything to do with the fact then now that you feel it's time for you to kind of transition into the the other photographer that you want to do as being your priority because you mentioned to me in the week that as it stands at the moment the way the diary is there's four weddings remaining for you is that correct Correct. So, yeah. so, so why, why are you for somebody who is so well known within the wedding industry and has got such a record? I, I'm not a wedding photographer. You put me a bunch of wedding photos of, I, I guarantee I'll be able to point yours out. Even if I've never seen them before, I'll know your wedding. So you, you've got a real good, you've got the brand. Why would you move away from it? What's, what's the motivation? Well, partly this whole idea about the rock stars, I just said, you know what? I, I don't really want to be spending Friday nights on a, in a travel lodge on the M6 anymore. You know, yeah. I don't, it's, it's all of that element of things. And, uh, you know, we, I've got to this stage of my life and, it, and in fairness, it's been a long-term kind of plan progression since I was a kid, really. Uh, and I've got to this stage of my life where, you know, I've been very, very lucky You know, I've got a very happy family life, all of that kind of stuff. And so, you know, I'm, I'm like, actually now, now's the time. And, for a long time, I was only shooting 25 or so weddings a year. Um, and I never shot in August. For example, I would never, you know, never shoot. I haven't shot an aug a wedding in August since, I don't know, 2010 or something like that. Always that, like, for the kids. Um, but that meant that pretty much every other weekend throughout the year was me going somewhere, you know, and right. doing stuff and disappearing and everything. Um, and now I just it's time, you know, I think, mm. I think it's a little bit like when, you know, I don't know, teachers retire or, or musicians retire. They're just like, yeah, it just feels right. You know, and, and yeah. I don't have the same pressures as, as I used to have, um, you know, when I was younger. So yeah, it's, it's just time. And it, it feels absolutely right. It feels a hundred. And I think, right. I think there's a lot to be said for that, Kevin. It's gut instinct. I'm a, I'm a huge believer in when your gut instinct is telling you something that, pretty much most of the time it's right. Um, yeah. And I, just, I would I'd probably say that with something like wedding photography, and, and I would say more than any other brand or any other genre of photography, if you're starting to feel that it's time to change, I think it probably is the best thing to do because intentionally or not, that could possibly affect how you photograph weddings if you just carry on slogging through when it's not something that you really feel that you want to do, I guess. So about a year ago, I was at a wedding and um, some chap came up to me and he said, are you, are you married? 
And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I am, you know, I, I, I you know, I, I, I had no idea. I, he, it didn't really matter or anything, but he could have been gay, straight, whatever. And I was like, this is an odd question to ask me, but yeah, I am. I'm really sorry. And he said, oh, cause my grandmother's kind of keen on you. Grandmother. That I think <laughs> was the point, you know, I started, I started photographing people that were the same age as me. And now, you know, I'm kind of Brilliant. photographing people who could be my children. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I went home and I said to my wife, I said, oh, I don't know, you know, this is things are changing. I'm joining the gym again, know. he said. I'm joining yeah, the I, gym again. <laughs> I'm going back to the gym, but uh, you know, I'm going to start working out like brilliant. <laughs> oh, fantastic. God, I, didn't, I never thought I'd hear you say that. Wow, yeah. brilliant. Okay. All right, well, listen, I want to talk about, you know, you're making that decision then. The four weddings are remaining. Once they're finished, then what you're going to do. So I want, I want us to talk about that, but we've been talking 46 minutes already. Bang, it's just gone like that. So I'm going to kind of just have a, like I do every week, have a glass, of, a sip of water, and I'll give you a chance to do that as well. So I'll I'll, I'll be back with you in a moment, Kevin. Uh, but just for now, the uh, just to give Kevin a chance to have a quick slip of, uh, sip of water or whatever he's got, uh, just to let you know, then the other day, uh, yeah, was it Friday? Days of, days of racing by. I met up with my mates again. Uh, the lads up in Wales, you got Anthony and Ian, obviously our friend Steve Healy came along as well. And we just did some uh, photography, managed to take a portrait of Steve using that L60, that constant LED light that I've mentioned a few times uh, during these lives, because I'm just loving using the constant light now. So me and Kevin will have a quick sip of water. I'll play the quick ad, just to give you a bit more information about that L60B just to give us a chance to have a drink and then we'll dive back in to find out what actually is Kevin going to be doing? Where's he going to be going? Well, you know, what's he going to be up to now that the weddings are coming to an end? So here's that ad and we'll be back in a short while. dramatic music on that there in it hey <laughs> woo uh, there's no. some interesting comments i was just looking kevin while that was playing there that uh, a couple of things that have come in one here from uh, greg thirtle he's put agreed that i see a lot of photographers who post so much about them and not their clients so that seems to be it's not just you that is noticing it and quite a nice one here from martin postle who's put yep we all only live uh, we all only live our life in one direction you've got to stand back and make sure you smell the roses as time passes i couldn't agree more because i'm sure as as i'm getting older time is going quicker and i don't think i'm the only one that feels that way but uh there you go right so kevin come on then so you've got four weddings remaining what's next for kevin mullins what's what's because obviously you're not going to be uh, giving up the photography no, what's, no. What, where you what where you going then what's going to be happening well i'll be i'll still be doing um the educational side of things that i've been doing for a long time now workshops um online mentoring all of that kind of stuff that will continue um i will i've got my studio which this is my training room and behind that black door is a, a studio which seems completely came to intuitive to what we've been talking about already but i actually enjoy doing studio portraiture so i'll be be doing a little bit more of that um and i'm i'm going to be doing a lot more kind of personal projects but uh you know street photography those workshops obviously exist but you know spending a bit more time doing it and i like to get much more involved with um any kind of environmental 
uh, portraiture, storytelling, um, and I don't mean environmental as in the environment, as, as important as that is, um, but, you know, exploring a particular place or a particular topic or a particular demographic um, and, you know, really, really kind of getting my teeth into that kind of stuff, really. And ultimately, yeah, I think it's it's important, really important to me that, um, you know, I... I I still retain and become and stay a photographer. You know, I, yeah. I know from the wedding world, I know lots of people who literally photograph weddings and do nothing in between. And I, that's always been a, a worry for me that you become a wedding photographer or a street photographer, or whatever, you know, a portrait photographer. And, and actually the enjoyment and the passion for photography itself as an mm. art form goes away because of the job. Um, so I'm, you know, that's luckily never happened for me, but now, now I'll have a bit more time to explore that, you know, and, uh, it's yeah, a bit doing, old, doing the um, projects will be definitely the one that keeps that spark going. I can, I can wholeheartedly speak for that because I know that's all, that's all I've ever done really is always having projects on the go. And that just, it's definitely yeah. served me well, do you know what I mean? Keeping that excitement, that enthusiasm and stuff all the time. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that's like your experience with the world war two veterans, for example. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's that, that's a perfect example of a very uh, perfectly executed project, but with a legacy Thanks. that's going to go way, well beyond your your lifetime. You know, and, and, yeah, and yeah, that's, yeah. that's important. Yeah, it's funny you mention that because when I'm whenever I'm asked about, it, I always say that it's the the not just the most important thing I've ever done in my photography life, but I think in my life. Do you know what I mean? Because you just you go out to start these projects, certainly that one, and you have no idea where it's going to go. You think you know why you're doing it, but I'm, I'm a big believer as well is that when you do something for the right reasons, things naturally take a good course. Do you know what I mean? Whereas if you're going out there with, I'm going to do this because this could potentially give me this, yeah, then I think that can impact on it. Um, yeah. And that, that project did grow bigger and you know became more than what I expected because I just I was so invested in it emotionally as well yeah yeah and, and it's a legacy you know and legacy is whether it's candid or, or portraiture legacy the photography is about legacy isn't it you know and that's important. absolutely yeah. yeah 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 one one of the words I mentioned about you when we were doing the countdown was about um credentials and that was something, that's a word that I wouldn't have even thought of before until I went to that Arnold Schwartz, there is a reason I'm saying this, went to that Arnold Schwarzenegger Expo uh, a couple of weeks ago and there was one of the bodybuilders, world famous bodybuilders there, a guy called Dorian Yates. And Dorian was talking about the modern day trainers who kind of come from nowhere, they'll give you all this advice, you know, they've, they've managed to get themselves a decent physique very, very quickly, hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. And now they're giving out all this advice. And he says, just all you've got to wonder about these people is what are their credentials? Take your advice from people who have kind of, you know, they've, they've walked those walks. They've gone through the battles. They've done all this. They've done things right. They've done things wrong. They can speak from experience. So that is, that's the word that I would use with you is credentials. Because obviously you've got the, the business side of things that you do. I didn't, there's some things on your website I had no idea that you did you know, like the mentoring side of things and what have you. So you mentioned that that, that is obviously going to continue. Yeah. What, what does that all, what does that entail? The business side of things that you are going to go or that you do go through with people, be it in a group or maybe one-to-ones, what kind of thing? Is that teaching people that this is how you photograph a wedding or is it more to do with the back end, you know, the, the business, running the business, the marketing and stuff like that? Yeah, so I, you know, I'm a big believer that you know nobody can be a successful, well, photographer in any business really without understanding the fact that the business is more important really, um, in terms of getting clients and you know business and work money in the in the bank. So yeah, most of the mentoring is uh, you know kind of short term or long term. There's there's options for everybody, but ultimately what I can't do because my um, my style is candid. What I can't do is teach people. You know, it's not like a in terms of like a, a portfolio building exercise. You know, we go on a street photography workshop, for example, and it's you know you can't guarantee things are going to happen. But I can yeah. talk to them about the principles of light composition, moments, storytelling, all of that kind of stuff. But for the wedding photography point of view, a vast majority of the people that um, I speak to, it's mostly about the business. This you know the branding, SEO, marketing, client acquisition, client education. Uh, editing workflow, all of that kind of stuff. 
Um, because, you know, I'm not, it's not for me to, whilst we do kind of critiques and, and image reviews, it's not for me to say that that picture is better than mine, you know, because ultimately it's, it's candid and there is no, there is no real right or wrong. You know, yes, you can look at a picture, candid picture and say, okay, compositionally, it could have been stronger. You know, the, the, the understanding of the light could have been stronger. Uh, perhaps if you would waited a moment longer, the moment would have been stronger. Those kind of mm-hmm. things are things that you can uh, pass on as advice. But it's not like being in a studio and saying, you need the light at this ratio. You need, you know, don't forget to have a shoulder forward, that kind of thing. Um, so from a photography point of view, that's quite a challenge. Uh, but ultimately, you know, I've, I do feel like that. I, I don't know. I have got a lot of stuff that I, I start my, my kind of workshops and everything with by going over the mistakes I made, you know, and I, I show the pictures from the first wedding and, you know, there's, there's, there's stuff that happened, you know, that, that's just, I wish people had told me about and, and, yeah. you know, and that's ultimately what we go through. But yeah, business is super important and it's forgotten by a lot of people, I think. So do you, in these workshop things because I'm, I'm intrigued because i don't do workshops now and that that rps one that i'm doing is the first one i've done or will be doing in a long time so i'm just kind of intrigued about the, the workshop side of things so there's the business side of it do you you're retouching do you teach people how to do your style of retouching or is that not something that you do not not really because i will teach i will i'll will show people how uh, my workflow works so, you know, for example, using photo mechanic to call and then how to set up Lightroom and, you know, presets and the speed system that I use. I, I'm, I've, inter- I've, interesting that you use that, that photo mechanic because that was, that's what Scott Diusa, the concert photographer last week was saying he uses. Interesting. It, Sorry, I was just, it, yeah. It, <laughs> just coming away you know, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top tip, don't, don't do not do in Lightroom, do it in photo mechanic much faster. You'll save weeks of your life. Anyway, um, but yeah, so ultimately I then, you know, talk to them about the way that I use smart collections um, as part of the workflow. And I have a, a whole suite of smart collections that I've built that allow me to very quickly move through the edit. So marking things that are, are going to be color. And then once they are color, they go to another smart collection. And, and it's a very streamlined process. So that, that element of things is there. Um, and of course, you know, presets i sell presets lots of people sell presets etc but ultimately the answer that i tell people with um you know editing and style etc is you know even if you are using a preset make sure that you you do your critical color correction first um in lightroom or photoshop wherever you're using um you know make sure you get your crop in color correction white balance etc done first and the thing that a lot of people seem to forget is that if they're going to turn it into black and white they don't think that's important but it's really important. Mm. I mean, you'll know mm. this, obviously, and I'm sure a lot of your, your viewers will know this. You know, having a, a bad white balance on an image that you're going to turn into black and white will cause you problems later on in the edit. So, you know, th- those little things from a workflow point of view, um, absolutely. But, yeah, I do I do all kinds of stuff. And, you know, the, the pandemic taught us a lot. And the thing it taught us the most, I think, was that you can you can reach out across the world and, you know, help other people all over the world and you know before before that it was like face-to-face stuff you know mostly wasn't it and- uh, yeah yeah it was, it was interesting because obviously when you know we, when we were planning this i was diving around your website and i didn't know that you did these presets and it what was really interesting about it was i mean I, they look great the way that you've done it all on the website looks really really cool and i was remember i was speaking to my friend steve healy i think's here he's the guy that i photographed our friend and I mentioned to him about, you know, we and you were speaking and he just kind of like said it like it was nothing. Oh, yeah, because I've got Kevin's presets. And I was like, what, what, what? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He's someone else who had your presets. And it seems that a few people have got your presets. So my, my question with this was, I can understand maybe somebody who is full time education who releases presets. I can understand that. But for you, who's doing all these weddings and you've developed this particular style that is very identifiable as Kevin Mullins style. My kind of thoughts were, why would there's a, there's a, there's going to be an answer to it. But I would think if I was Kevin, I wouldn't want to release anything that would let anybody get their work. Maybe that looks I, really close to mine, because my look for these weddings is my my marketing, my branding. So yeah. when you when you've when you've released these presets, was that not a concern that 
I'm going to let people get images yeah. look, looking like mine or? Yeah. Do you know what I'm so, saying? <laughs> I, mean, I absolutely know what you're saying because it held me back for a very long time. Um, and I, I would get a lot of people say, especially the black and white stuff, you know, there was a specific kind of way that I did these things. Uh, I'd love to, you know, do you sell presets? And, and, and I flatly said no, because of the reasons that you just mentioned. And then uh, one day in, I don't know, what was it, February 2020, I was sat at the bottom of my stairs, uh, basically thinking I've got no way of earning a living because all of my weddings have been cancelled. The pandemic had hit, you know, it was just, I had nothing, like literally nothing. Um, and I uh, brought my computer, which is here in the studio now, and as Boris Johnson told us to, I dragged my computer up, up to my house um, and I thought, well, now's the time to do this. And, and so I did it and, and, and it flew, you know, those first set of presets, um, I'm now on kind of edition three of them and then they're not really upgrades. Every edition is different. Um, but the, the first set saved my bacon during COVID to save the, the family's wow. bacon. Really. Um, and so, yeah, that was ultimately the reason for it. And, and then, of course, you know, I, I had this conversation with Gemma, my wife, and I was like, I am concerned, you know, just like you said, that, you know, the, the, the style is what is part of my brand. And, and people, you know, I don't really want other people to, and she was, and, and quite rightly, she said, yeah, but it's not about the way your pictures look, it's, it's what's in them, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. and as you know, as we've been talking about today, the observation, you know, and again, I'm not saying that my observation skills are better than yours or the next person or, or anybody, but they're different. Everybody, you know, and I say this on my street photography workshops, turn around, take a picture, and we'll all have a different view of what we're standing in front of. And that's, that's a beautiful thing and an important thing. So yeah. that kind of eased my concerns a little bit about the presets. Um, and also it eased my, uh, banks back loan and all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> I, I guess really as well, the, the fact that the magical thing about this, you know, like, like these presets is the fact that it's not like a baked in look, is it? It's not like having those lookup tables. It's like click done. The fact that presets are the fact you can dive in and you can adjust them. And I'm sure, you know, cause I've got presets from other people that I play around with. Yeah. And if I click on it, it's not exactly as I would want it. And it's and that's the great thing about it. And it's like it reminds me of when I when I was doing in person workshops, and we'd have, you know, I'd have my I'd be at the front with my computer with an image on it. Everybody else would be at their desks with their computers with the exact same image on it that I'd given to them. And I'd say, right now, do this, do this, and do this, and they'd all do it. And I'd go, right now, move that slider there to ten and take that one down to minus five. And you can guarantee out of that group there, there would probably be all of them that would go down, increase that to 10, or, or actually, no, I prefer five on that one, and take that, yeah. actually take that one down to seven. So even yeah. though you are giving people the, you know, this is my blueprint for how my stuff looks, they're always going to adjust it anyway, because that's, it, and un, un, kind of unwillingly do it, because there's just something yeah. in us that says, do it different, because you Absolutely. prefer it this way, so... Yeah, and it's subjective, isn't it? And 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 the beauty of the later versions of Lightroom is that um, adjustment at the top of the preset panel. It's the strength slider. Says so, you know maybe I don't want it quite as contrasty yeah, yeah, yeah. or yeah. whatever. You know, um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I I, I built all mine on uh, using lookup tables in in Photoshop um, as the profile base. So they all they're all based on profiles. Um, so there was a lot of a lot of work that went into it. A lot of work. I didn't just want it to be a set of sliders, you know, that yeah. basically was just that. So, uh, you know, a lot of the kind of, um, certainly the, the black and white stuff is, is built first in Photoshop layers and layers and layers, and then creating lookup tables, that, you know, you know, all about this stuff and, and probably lots of your viewers do also. So the cube files using them to base the profiles on, which then the presets themselves are actually just minor adjustments. You know, there's only small amounts of slider adjustments, but the profiles that are brought in underneath, they're the important things. There's, I'm going to go completely off on a different sort of uh, angle now, because I mentioned Steve Healy has got those presets. He mentioned to me, another thing that Steve Healy said, I've got to ask you about, because he seems to mention this whenever I see him and we talk about you because uh, we do uh, he said ask him about or t ask him to tell you about the bit when he's trapped his camera in the car door or something <laughs> and it's driven along and it's something about a camera being dragged along basically what's what is the story with that then 
So that's my X70, and I'm, I, uh, yeah, I do have it. So this is my uh, Fujifilm X70. I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's a I bit bad. It's got a few marks, and, yeah. And worn, and the screen's a bit shattered, and all that kind of stuff. It still works, but yeah, it's a, it's a lo lovely camera. And one day I was, uh, I'd been using it in a church uh, a ceremony, and I got in my car, and it was on a strap, on a long strap. And uh, I, I put it, thought I'd put it in my pocket, shut the car door, um, driving out of the church, and I could hear this this kind of rattling noise. And I was almost, and I looked down, the strap, luckily, very fortuitously, was still inside the car. The camera was outside being dragged along the gravel. Uh, so luckily, I don't really take that many pictures with it at a wedding. Um, however, and so I was concerned, but, you know, when, when it was break time at the wedding, I got my laptop out, stuck the memory card in, everything was fine. Um, and the camera still works fine. And I, I you know, I love it. Such a nice camera, but yeah, it's battered within an inch of his life. Uh, most of my wow. cameras are a little bit, yeah, they've, they've oh, dear, seen some, some work, yeah. I remember, I remember on one of the weddings I did, I thought, this is, again, going back years, and I probably only did literally four weddings. I thought I was being a bit kind of, you know, shrewd, and I ordered a lens from abroad. Um, America actually came, I didn't have to pay any importation tax, and I literally paid it for half price on this lens, and I was like, quids in. And I had this, was it a low pro bag, I think it was? It was almost like a... The kind of case that you take on holiday, do you know what I mean? Where you zip it open yeah. and it's got the wheels where you can walk along with it. So I had that in the back of my car. And I remember I'd put this lens in there and I'd I thought I'd close the bag. And then when I lifted the bag up to put it on the legs, onto its, onto its uh, wheels at the bottom, the, the door is kind of like opened and this lens yeah. just doo -doo -doo uh... straight to the bottom. And the, the cost of the repair was half, it was, was the same price as what I'd paid for the lens. So I never even... <laughs> Yeah, I ended up not saving any money at all. So, yeah. yeah, there you go. Cool. All right. Well, listen, we've been chatting for a while, almost an hour and 10 minutes. I think it's time to see what uh, questions, comments, and all that kind of stuff have come in as well. So let me just dive over. Let me play this graphic. We've always got to make sure the graphics get seen. And then I will dive over to here. Now, a lot of these will probably be uh, comments, there might be the odd question in there as well. But Sophie says here, Kevin, actually interesting one. This will give you an idea of how time's gone by. Facebook was created in 2004. We mentioned Facebook earlier on. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. So. that's right. Yeah. Mm. Wow. That's incredible, isn't it? I didn't join yeah. it till later. No, I was kept, kept well away from it. Uh, my answer is put, it's an honor to be part of a special day in someone's life. And that's Anthony's my friend over in Wales, and, and he literally does love doing weddings and it, like i say it's just not my thing it gives me a bit of a ooh, in my stomach because i've the few i did ugh. uh oh i mate steve perry i didn't know this he's put he's doing his first wedding at 70 years old fair play wow. to you steve yeah fair play and good luck yeah <laughs> uh barb white has but i did former wedding photography in a small town in central alberta back in film days of, oh imagine that film days of the late seventies, it was so stressful waiting until Tuesday to take in my film and fr oh yeah. man, and Friday getting it back. I, yeah, the delay from Tuesday to Friday, yeah, that would take a. It'd be the worry for me of of having not nailed it. I remember somebody, a friend of mine, Steve. He used to he did photograph weddings and he did it with a Hasselblad, mm -hmm. and was it like twelve exposures per reel? And he used to go there with elastic bands all up his forearm. So as soon as one was taken, you take it out, get elastic band off, put it off, put it into his bag, put a new film in and carry on. And all day be taking these elastic bands off. Can you imagine that? No, no that's chance. Stress beyond that is, yeah, absolutely. Uh, birthday boy, Lee Churchill has put, have you ever had a family member think that they were the allocated photographer and not yourself? Ooh. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's been in the industry, we call them Uncle Bob's, don't we? There's been plenty of them over the years. People that are, you know, especially now, now that most of us are mirrorless and sometimes they'll turn up with, you know, big old DSLRs from the 80s or something. Um, but yeah, they just become part of the story. You know, that's that's the thing. And, you know, I've never really I've never really had any kind of issues where somebody is like, oh, you should be doing this young man or well, nowadays old man. Um, but you know, it's, <laughs> I, I, I have had situations where people have been, you know, standing in front of me in the aisle and, you know, kind of just buzzing around in my local vicinity a little bit. And, uh, you know, it, it just, it, 
it's easier for us to move than to be argumentative about it. And, yeah. you know, it's, yeah, no, no real dramas. It's just, but, again, it's just part of the story. But what about the phone thing then? As a wedding photographer, phones, like if you're shoot, like an image here, let's say, let's have a look at this one, maybe something like that or maybe something like th that one in particular. Is that yeah. not something where you think like the people with the phones, as you're set all to do it and they start leaning out with their iPhones or whatever? Have you ever, you must have that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that happens a lot. Obviously, it happens a lot. But then I, you know, I came to that by saying, okay, well, look at, you know, look at photos from the 70s or 80s. And people had, you know, little compact cameras, little disposable cameras, it's always there, you know, and it's, it's the same argument that people say, you know, on the, if you're on the train today, everybody's just staring at their phone. And yeah, actually, if you're on the train in 1984, everybody would be staring at a newspaper, you know, nobody talked to each other yeah, then either. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's yeah. the same thing. It's just, it's the world we live in now, and the photos will will demonstrate that in you know uh, 20, 30, 40 years time. I, one of the, the key things for me with my wedding work, at least, is that people look at a picture in 30, 40 years time, and they're taken back to that exact moment that happened, and mm -hmm. whatever people were wearing, what they were doing, that's what happened. Rather than thinking, oh yeah, do you remember when that photographer or Kev we had made us do this or remember that time when he told all of our guests to put their phones away like yeah that's not what i want you know i want them to go oh yeah look <laughs> they'll look they'll go look oh blimey mobile phones do you remember when mobile phones were a thing now by then we'll all be have mobile phones in our retinas or something like that i suppose <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's, i mean it's a, it's a great attitude to have and you, you know you come across as somebody who is very just kind of zen I don't know if that's the, if that is the case for anybody who knows you really well. Would they be laughing when I say that? But would you say that that is something about your your personality is what serves you well when it comes to doing, particularly the wedding photography, to have that kind of it's not a problem kind of attitude? I think that um, yeah, I definitely. I don't think my wife would would like describe me as Zen, but <laughs> I am very very relaxed at weddings, definitely, and I think that's partly an experience thing you know so i'm, I'm certainly yeah. not saying that at the beginning it was like that but now yeah pretty much nothing phases me i have to say and you know i can uh, if things are happening in the room or if something's happening in the environment that i'm in i can read that very well i can read the people i can read the personalities and i'll you know i'll, I'll do my you know move away or whatever you know quite often for example you'll have a bridesmaid who's recently got married and you know she's like my photographer got her address did this and that and whatever um you know and, and she's assuming that i'm going to do the same thing and you know and, I, and i'll just have a polite conversation with her and i'm saying i really are great that's amazing i hope your pictures are really really beautiful and, I, and then i'll just say where did you get married and then we'll have a little conversation about where she and then she's forgotten about trying to get me to hang the dress up somewhere or you know um so yeah it's a, it's a people management thing and and totally uh, yeah. very relaxed very laid back yeah cool all right uh, just looking through some more of these ones here, then we've got um, uh, when you were talking about speaking with the bride and groom and also asking them to speak to their parents to say, look, just give them a heads up. Tim's obviously saying this here. So important to set expectations with the clients and communicate your style and what you'll be doing during the event. Great tip. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, that, I mean, that is a really good one. I didn't even think of that one there where you can get you know, get the bride and groom to speak to their parents to give them the heads up because obviously experience, as you have, tells you that if you are going to get any kind of um, pushback, it's going to be from the bride and groom's parents. So if you can get them on side and understanding, then you're on a winner, yeah. I guess. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Anthony, quite right, let's put, is there even time to think about social media when shooting a wedding? Yeah, good point. Or maybe they're... Their attitude, Anthony, is, is there even time to shoot a wedding when you're thinking of your social media content? That could oh, be the way. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Peter, Peter here, Peter van der Schans has put, how much time do you spend on post processing? Well, that's a good question because, uh, you know, at the beginning, I was spending way too much, um, you know, and part of the, the mentoring process I go through with people is understanding your bottom line and, and how the time is, is so important in terms of, of your your hourly rate, if you like. So, you know, I, I spent a lot of time refining my workflow. And, and now, you know, if I'm not interrupted, I can, t from card to gallery, I can probably do a standard eight hour wedding 
in about two to three hours, which is pretty quick, a lot quicker than, you know, the three or four weeks it used to take me. Wow. Okay. And obviously the old photo mechanic is a big help when it comes to the culling. So how, how many images would you say? Cause I hear some nightmare numbers from people who photograph weddings. When you, when you're in your kind of like zone taking pictures at weddings, how many would you reckon that you do come away with? Bear in mind that you do have this stand back and observe kind of process. Yeah. Um, way too many, you know, we all, uh, you know, I've, I've seen so many photographers where they ask that question, like, yeah, I deliver 400 pictures. I take about 600, you know, and, and that's just not true. So I, on a typical average wedding, uh, eight hour wedding, the clients can expect about 400 pictures. I'll normally take somewhere in the region of 15 to 1600 on the wow. day itself. Um, wow. which is a lot, but a lot less than a lot of people and a lot more than some other people, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I typically, you know, click, 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 moment, move, click, 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 moment, move. So, you know, one in three, one in four, that's, that's, that's what I kind of aim for, but it's, it is a little bit dependent on the wedding, uh, the light, the environment, the time of year, you know, winter weddings yield a lot. Yes. A lot less, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, that kind of thing, but yeah, on average, that's, that's about right. All right. Well, the last thing I want to ask you before we get to know where, where should people go to find more about what your, you know, see your images and also all these other things that you're offering, like the business side of things, the mentoring, the presets and all that stuff. I've got to ask you from all the images that you sent me through, what's the story with these two? Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so that was a, that was a family. I do document documentary family uh, photos as well. And, um, and she was like, yeah, he, I was like, what well, you know, what do you do during the day? And she was like, well, I just stand here and he plays with the taps basically all day long. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the, you know, it's the, the thing, the principles are the same light, you know, like the focus of me on these pictures is about making the most out of the light that's available to me. Um, yeah. and then capturing the moment. So yeah, cute little lad, lovely family. And that was, that was it. Yeah. Brilliant. I was just intrigued because it just seemed really random. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I it, but I thought, yeah. but then obviously going through it, there are other family type of things. Cause I remember these from years, years ago when you did these yeah. Yeah. and Kevin, I know that obviously you're, you're going to be kind of doing other stuff in the portraits. You've got to, you've got to promise me one thing. Just one thing is all I want you to promise me is that you do more of this. Cause I uh, loved this series when you did it. I don't know how many years ago it was now, but I remember you doing it. You've got to do more of this. Yeah. Make sure the, you do more of that, mate. The men of Malmesbury. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And that's your background in fact. And in fact, I think probably I use the timeless, um, editing workflow that you, you had. Oh, right. timeless, you know, there I think, you go. You? Um, and that wasn't yeah. planned by the way. <laughs> I didn't know he was going to say that. It wasn't planned at all, <laughs> but yeah, no, I will. And that's, that's the kind of portraiture I love. You know, I love yeah. that. Cool. All right. Yeah. Uh, I've got, uh, before I, uh, before I say, uh, Tara, quickly on here, um, I'm guessing you, you can answer this one very quickly. Have you ever taken pictures where the couple wasn't happy about them? Doubt it. Um, no, I would say, I would say no. I've had a couple of occasions where, uh, the bride's mother has had a few things to say, but, but not clients. No. Okay. Uh, John Young has put any flash or extra additional light that you use or I, and in fact, that's, that was on my list here, John. So good question. Yeah. Do you, are you primarily somebody who is literally just using the light that you have available or do you ever take off camera flash with you to a wedding? I don't use flash. Um, I will use the available light as much as possible, but I do use a, for the dancing part of things, this little Manfrotto LED. Um, okay. it's called the Manfrotto Lumi Muse. I think, I don't actually think they make them anymore, but again, this has got battle scars and all that kind of stuff. So that's a constant led. I charge it once a year. It's brilliant. Um, <laughs> and it's mostly for kind of focus acquisition in, in low light, but everything else. Yeah. Available light and by available light, I mean, natural light, disco light, DJ lights, sure. you know, reflections, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Cool. And the last thing to bring up here is from our friend Chris, who's put these portraits are sensational. I love them, Mr. Mullins. There you go. Chris. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, Kevin, then where, where should people go to find out more of what you're doing and also see your pictures, talk, see what business kind of things that you're doing and also your presets and all that. 
Uh, well, the simplest thing is go to kevinmullinsphotography.co.uk. Uh, you'll see all the wedding work and everything else, but on the four photographers link, uh, which Glenn is kind of showing there, under there you'll see my, I've got a, um, a three monthly thing that's been clipped on there. That's a kind of online group session, one-to-ones, workshops, presets, street photography. Loads sessions. of stuff. It's all under there. Yeah. Loads uh, and loads of stuff. Yeah, loads right. of stuff. Okay, obviously the uh, presets and all that stuff's in there as well. So we'll make sure that all those links will get put into the description part of the video. Um, and also that there'll be a blog post tomorrow. I shall trim out the countdown start of the video right at the very foot. So when everyone watches it after today, they won't have to sit through that five minute countdown. But there you go. I told you it'd fly by, mate, didn't I? It did, it did indeed, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> So, I yeah, know, thank crazy. you very much for Aaron having me. Enjoyed Not at all. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, brilliant stuff, as always. I knew it would be, but uh, thank you so much for the time that you've given this evening, mate. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing where the next sort of months, years take you. I'll be looking forward to it. But thank you very much, mate. Don't disappear. Hang around in the virtual green room, and I shall be there. I'll be there in a moment. All right, bud. Okay. Thanks, Thank Glenn. you very much. All righty. Cool. Well, there you go. See, another another great guest, another great week. I knew it would be. Though, I mean, I don't do weddings. I don't do weddings. But I think anybody out there who just takes pictures of people could learn a lot from that. Event photographers, portrait photographers. Because the message seems to be the same, doesn't it, from what Kevin was saying there, is literally just slow down. You know, don't kind of just rush in taking pictures. Just slow down, observe. Certainly when you're doing your weddings, but also when you're taking your portraits, like I always talk about slow down, get to know the person you're photographing, because if you get to know them better, you'll capture the real them, won't you, really? So, yeah, it's amazing, really, when you kind of see how all these different genres of photographer kind of overlap. All the little things that you can learn seem to kind of work in each of the different genres, landscape, portraits, weddings, you name it. So, yeah, loved it. I knew it would be good. I knew it would be good. All right, before I go, then, just a couple of things. Just a reminder that uh, the Lightroom conference, then, don't forget that that link... Uh, for the Lightroom conference is just this one here, nice and short. You can click on that link there or put that URL into your uh, web browser. That will kind of show you a little bit more details about the Lightroom conference that's coming up middle of uh, April. I've got two classes. Oh, yeah, two classes on that one. And the other one to let you know about was, if I just dive back over to it, was the Raw Photographic Society. I know Steve Healy, who I photographed, he's coming along. He's going to be there apparently. But uh, yeah, a day of doing retouching on all kinds of portraits, landscapes, and what have you. And there's the link for that. It's mainly for um, mainly for people in the UK, I guess, because it's in Ringwood, I think, which is the New Forest area. Is that right? Twelve pound fifty per person, something like that, anyway. But there you go. The last thing to let you know about is next week's guest. I think he's in the chat. It's Krishnagar, our friend Krishnagar. People might know him as a bloke who works at Cam Carmarthen Cameras, but there's way more to this guy. Wonderful portraits, great line, uh, great lighting, but also has got a very distinctive kind of genre that he photographs. So I want to speak to him about that because I think there's a lot we can learn about that. So there you go. That's Chris. That's next week. That's the 14th of April, 7 p.m. UK. Same time, same place. So thank you so much for joining me. It's great to see the activity again in the chat. Thanks again to Kevin. Um, and I shall see you. Oh, and one more. Happy birthday, Lee Churchill, if you're still there. But there you go. That's it. Thanks for joining me. I will see you again next week. <laughs>